Okay. Lesson 6.1, and this officially is kind of part one or day one, whatever you want to call it. We are talking about vectors. Um, officially, if you look at the chapter, the title of chapter six, I think it is applications of trigonometry. But um, we start off in these first couple of lessons talking about vectors. Um, we'll also go into looking at graphing polar equations and some other various theorems, etc. But for the first couple of lessons, we're talking about vectors. So definitely taking a physics direction with this trig. But there's definitely a connection between physics and trig. Those of you that are in physics know, you know, you know there's that connection because you guys in physics are using the unit circle, just like we are here in trig. So, okay. Vectors. By definition, a vector is a directed line segment in the coordinate plane written as vector PQ, where P, in other words, point P is point X1, Y1 is the initial point, and Q, point X2, Y2 is the terminal point. Okay, so vector. It looks a lot like a I wouldn't say line segments, has an arrow on one end, so array. If you want to go back to the, I don't know, elementary, middle school terminology there, whenever we did that, but if we go back to the math basics, it looks a lot like array, okay? Now, the key is it's a directed line segment. It's not just um, this right here. It has... And we're going to talk about it as we go on, but we're going to talk about direction, the direction of these vectors and length of the vectors. So we'll get to that here in a moment. But first of all, notice it is important how you name these or which point is which. Okay. Notice P, point P here is the initial point. So the one that is an endpoint is the initial point. The one that is on the end of the arrow is the ter terminal point. Can't talk. Okay. And um, one of the things we're going to talk about today is giving a or finding component form for a vector. So, like, what would, I don't want to say ordered pair. It looks like an ordered pair, but it's not technically an ordered pair. It's component form. So, given the initial and terminal points of the vector, PQ, the component form if the vector is written as V. And notice instead of parentheses, they almost look like less than greater than signs. I don't know if there's a better name for them than that. Huh? Alligators. Alligators. Okay. The uh, generic name, not, you know, I don't know if there's a better mathematical name. But when we talk about component form, okay, first of all, we're not going to use parentheses. We're going to use these what look like less than greater than symbols, the arrow. In order to find the first point, you're going to subtract the x-coordinates. Now, what you have to pay attention to when we subtract these x-coordinates is that you're doing the terminal point minus the initial point. And then for the second component, for y2, same thing. You have to do, or v2, excuse me, you have to do y2 minus y1. So you're subtracting the y's. It's always going to be the terminal minus the initial. Now, doesn't say it here. This is where I write in. The book uses, and I like the terminology, head minus tail rule. And I don't know what you guys have necessarily heard, but in order to find component form, I like to talk, talk about, I like to refer to it as head minus tail rule. So I'm going to write HMT just to help you remember. But in other words, in order to find that component form, you're going to do the head of the vector, which the head is the arrow end, minus the tail, which is the initial end. And maybe, let's see. So a little bit of labeling here. This is the initial, or you can also call this the tail. This is the terminal end. Or you can also call it the head of the vector. So Q is always the head or is it just the highest one? Because technically Q can be higher than Q, right? 
the one with the arrow is always the head. So, could P be an arrow? It won't always be PQ. Oh, okay, well, then for like this example, could P be an arrow? Like if the dots were... A vector can go any direction. Okay. okay, a vector can go any direction. So, yes, it could. I mean, you know, on this one, P is the mm -hmm. tail or the initial end. Q is that terminal end or the head of the vector. Okay. Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, one of the things we're going to be doing, I'm going to go through several things and we'll practice finding them, but is finding component form. Notice component form of the vector is also sometimes called the position vector. So if you're asked for the component form or the position vector, we're going to use this idea of head minus tail, or if you prefer, terminal minus initial. Okay? Um, we're also going to talk about the magnitude of the vector. Now, when we talk about magnitude as a vector, you'll notice it says magnitude slash length. Magnitude is the fancy word they usually use, but it means the length of the vector. Okay, so we're going to talk about the magnitude or length of the vector. In terms of notation, they use what looks like absolute value, yes? Mm -hmm. And it is read as the absolute value of V, but when dealing with vectors, it represents the magnitude. So I am going to write that, yes, this is also called absolute value of V. Just like you've always learned, those bars indicate absolute value. They still do. And when we talk about the magnitude or the length of the vector, it's determined by finding the distance between the initial and terminal points. Thus, the following formulas are used. Does this second formula look familiar to you guys? Square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Remember learning that back? I don't know, algebra 1, middle school math. What? It probably has been. Okay, so officially, that second version is what you guys have hopefully been taught as the distance formula. If we're trying to find the distance formula between two points, that's essentially what that is. Okay, it's the distance formula between two points. Now, <clears throat> the short is, if you know the component form, you can just go straight into saying the square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared. If you don't know the component form, it's the same as using your initial and terminal points and finding it that way. And that is your absolute value of V, also known as magnitude in the vector world. And again, we'll practice with that here in a moment. And then one other piece here before we actually start into some examples. When adding two vectors, or multiplying by a scalar or constant, we simply add the components or distribute the scalar or constant. So basically we're talking about just the basic of adding two vectors. You add x with x, y with y. Okay, nothing fancy. If we're multiplying by a scalar, now multiplying by a scalar is not multiplying a vector times a vector. A scalar is just like a constant out front. And the idea is that if we're multiplying by a scalar, it can distribute into both pieces there. So just, you know, when adding or multiplying, you either add the components or you distribute, depending on which we're talking about there. And again, heading towards examples, right? That's kind of some general information. We're going to head towards examples. So example one. Ask us to find the component form and magnitude of the vector V equals vector PQ, where P is defined to be the point negative 3, 4, 
and Q is defined to be the point negative 5, 2. Okay. Let's start with the first piece. Component form. Okay, glance back up top if you need to. What did it say about the component form? It's finding V1 and V2. And to find V1, you subtract your X's. To find V2, you subtract your Y's. Head minus tail. So the head of the vector being the arrow, the tail being the other end. So I'm going to write V equals. I'm not using parentheses. I'm using what looks like less than greater than signs. Yes. And again, if you see me write HMT, realize that's me trying to say heads minus tails, right? Head minus tail. So in my X's, and keep in mind here, if this is vector PQ, can you visualize vector PQ? That means P is the, the initial or the tail, and Q is the head or the terminal, right? So for the X's, which way am I subtracting the X's? Okay, so remember it's heads minus tails, so negative 5 minus negative 3. I'll clean that up here in a moment. And then for the second component of this vector, 2 minus 4. Again, using the arrow at the end. So, clean up. Negative 5 minus negative 3 is negative 2. 2 minus 4, negative 2. And what is this I just found? Component form. And in this component form, we subtracted the x's in the first spot. Subtracted the y's in the second spot, essentially. Remember, these are the v1 and v2 values, if you'd like. Okay. The other part of this question said so find component form. We did that. Now we're going to talk magnitude. Okay? Magnitude of the vector. Which magnitude is another word for finding the length of the vector if you want. Okay? And so how do we find that length? Okay? One option up here is the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared, yes? The other option is the longer version. Now, I'm going to write them both out just to show you that you can do this either way, but you'll probably want to jump in on the shortcut is my guess, which is what, was that Jace that just said that? Okay, so regardless, whichever way you do this, it's a square root, right? If we use the long way, this is your middle school distance formula of x2 minus x1, so negative 5 minus negative 3, quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, 2 minus 4, quantity squared. Well, when you go to clean that up inside the parentheses, You should notice negative 5 minus negative 3 is negative 2 squared. 2 minus 4 is negative 2 squared. Notice is that using your V1 and V2? It is. Okay, so yes, you can skip this first row. I'm just trying to show the connection there. 
and you can go straight to there if you've already found your component form. If you don't have your component form, then you're going to have to go the old-fashioned way. Okay, do some math. Negative 2 squared is? 4. And by the way, what do we get when we square negative? A positive. I still feel like I'm fighting that. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4. The other negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is? 8. So it's the square root of 8. I have one simplification step on here. Yeah. 8 has a perfect square in it, right? 8 is 4 times 2. But the square root of 4 is 2. And so that 2 goes outside the radical. It becomes 2 square root of 2. And that is your magnitude. Okay. And I didn't sketch this on here. And you don't necessarily have to, but if I just do kind of a quick visual here, P is negative 3, 4. Okay, so there's my P. Negative 5, 2 is over here. There's my Q. Realize, okay, so there is just kind of a sketch of my vector, right? Not beautiful, but a sketch of my vector. And so as we look at this, the magnitude is the length of that vector. So 2 square root of 2, which uh, square root of 8 is 2 point something, right? Yeah, 2 point something, almost 3. So that vector has a length of almost 3. And then the component form, this talks about the direction of the vector. Okay, this talks about the direction of the vector. Um, and so the fact that it's, Negative, negative, it's heading down, down and left. Is that a good way to put it? Try to put it into words there. Okay. Component form, magnitude. You've got formulas, right? So it's a matter of just putting it all together. Questions there? Like what I just did here? No, I don't think so. I don't think you have any vectors to sketch in homework or anything. You're not doing anything else? Huh? You're not doing anything else with it? That's it? With that problem right there? Yeah. No, nope, nothing else. That's it. Okay, let's look at example two then. Example two. We have u is negative one, three. That's vector u is negative 1, 3. Vector v is 4, 7. Find the component form of the following vectors. So notice, we're already get, these vectors are already in component form, yes? This is u, it's in component form. This is v, it's in component form. On part a, we're being asked to find the component form of u plus v. Well, what did I say about adding earlier? You just add them, okay? You're going to add the like pieces, yes? Huh? Yeah, what well, looks like the X's and Y's, which would be like the V1, V2, we're going to add them. So if we're trying to do U plus V, that means I'm doing, let me write it out here, vector that is negative 1, 3, plus the vector that is 4, 7. In order to actually add those, you're adding first piece and first piece, which is negative 1 plus 4. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And then we're also going to add 3 and 7, which is 
So when you add vectors u and v, you get the resulting vector of 3, 10. This is the very big, this is, these are the very basics of vectors, okay? You physics people are going to be way above what we're doing in here, okay? If you've done as much with, physics, uh, with vectors as I expect, so. Okay. We might do some of that. I don't know. I'm trying to remember exactly what all we have. Okay. B. 3U. You're distributing the 3 into the U. So if U is negative 1, 3, that means I'm going to do 3 times the negative 1. 3 times the 3, and I'm going to get the vector that is negative 3, 9. Okay. Well, if you guys like A and B, I'm going to make you work a little bit for C. But realize, A, we practice adding. B, we practice multiplying by a scalar, by a single number. Okay. C, we get to do both at the same time. It's 2u plus negative 1v. As with any math problem, what do we have to do first? Distribute. Okay, well, distribute, yeah, as in we have to do the 2 times the yeah, u. Sorry, I had to process here. We have to do the 2 times the u, and we have to do the negative 1 times v. In other words, my point is we have to do the multiplication before we can do the adding, right? It's about 2 <laughs> it just, it just, as I admitted during homeroom, vectors are not like at the top of my like confidence list here. And it just took me a moment to process. And I haven't taught these in two years at least. So yeah, cha chapter six got scrapped when we because it took us all that time to do chapter five. Yes, you guys got chapter five in person this year. Oh, yeah. Pre-cal last year got chapter five virtually. Okay, so if we're doing 2 times u, that means I'm doing 2 times negative 1 and 2 times 3. And then I'm going to have a plus, and then I'm doing negative 1 times v. So negative 1 times 4 and negative 1 times 7. I am off the screen. Let me get myself on the screen. Okay, so do that multiplication. And we end up with the first vector being negative 2, 6. The second vector being negative 4, negative 7. And then if we're going to add them, add what is essentially the x's and y's. So negative 2 plus negative 4. Negative 6. 6 plus negative 7? Negative 1. So we end up with the resulting vector. Negative 6, negative 1. And that was just adding the like pieces, right? Adding the first component with the first component, the second component with the second component. Okay. Before I turn the page, we're going to look at what it says about a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector with a magnitude or length of 1, as in 1 unit. So it is a unit in length. Um, thus, given vector v is not the zero vector. So this can't work if you are given the zero vector. But given any other vector, the following formula is used to find a unit vector. 
in the direction of V. And so we have this formula here, right? In order to find the unit vector, so U standing for unit, given a vector V, we're going to do 1 over the absolute value of V times V. Well, remember, what did we, absolute value of V, what is that in vector world? That is the magnitude, if you go up and look, right? So down here, when they ask for the absolute value, whoops, of V, that is the magnitude that goes on the bottom there. Now, this V over here that you're multiplying by, well, it defined in the definition given vector V. So V is going to be a vector in component form. So when I say component form, it looks a lot like an ordered pair, but it's not technically an ordered pair. And again, this is us finding, if you want, I guess, U is the unit vector. So that's what we're finding here. So there's two different ways to think of this. The way the formula is written right here is U equals 1 over the absolute value of V times V, or 1 over the magnitude of the vector times the component form. You could also write this as u equals v over absolute value of v. That would work as well, because that's saying what you're doing is you're taking the component form and dividing by the magnitude or absolute value. So it doesn't really matter what you use there. I'll put both at the top of the next page when I flip over here in a moment. Okay, flip to next page when you're ready. I am going to write at the top of that page my unit vector information. So what do you think of it as U is 1 over the absolute value of V times V? Or whether you think of it as U is V over the absolute value of V. You're using one of those two formulas to find the unit vector. And that's what example three asked me to do. Find a unit vector in the direction of the vector negative 3, 2 and verify that it has length 1. Okay. So what are we given right there? This V equals negative 3, 2. What is this? It's our V. This is our component form, if you will. Okay. In order to use our formula, what do we have to know? We still have to know the absolute value, don't we? We know that we're provided the component form. We have to know the absolute value. So we have to know the magnitude. Flip back, previous page if you need to. How do we find the magnitude? Square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared. And we can go straight that to that because we don't have two ordered pairs making this vector, do we? Okay, so this is going to be the square root of V1, which is negative 3, quantity squared, plus V2, 2 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is... 4, add them together and we are at 
13. Don't forget that this is technically a square root of 13. So we just found our magnitude, which is the other piece we need besides the component form. Okay, so in order to find the unit vector, u equals, for the moment, I'm going to write it as 1 over the absolute value of v times v. If you'd rather go straight to the other way, that's your call. Okay? As we do this, okay, fill in what you know. 1 over, what is the absolute value of v? Square root of 13 times v. And that v is in component form, which we were given, and so that is negative 3, 2. Now, don't leave your unit vector in this form traditionally, at least not usually. That 1 over square root of 13 out front is a scalar, right? It is a single number that we're, being multi we're multiplying that vector by, which means you're going to multiply it by both pieces. What happens when we multiply 1 over square root of 13 times negative 3? Yeah, negative 3 over square root of 13, because negative 3, if you want to think of it as a fraction, if you need that, it's negative 3 over 1 times 1 over square root of 13. So it's negative 3 over square root of 13, comma, 1 over square root of 13 times 2 is going to be 2 over square root of 13. That is your unit vector. What? Thank you. Old habits die hard. I think you did all of my work in school, but I never done anything. Yeah. I should not be putting parentheses if we're talking component form. Okay? So, I would say, I know if I'm guilty, you guys are going to be guilty too. So, just be careful. Warning to all of us. Help us catch each other, including me. Okay. There was one other part to this. Did you catch it? Verify. So, if this is truly a unit vector, a.k.a. assuming we didn't make any mistakes, we're going to verify that it has length 1. How do we verify a length of a vector? AKA, how do we find the length of a vector? Now, head minus tail gets us component form. Don't we have a formula for magnitude or length? Remember, magnitude, length, same thing. So we're going to use that formula. Basically, we're going to find the absolute value of u. So in order to find the absolute value of u, it's the square root of, we traditionally say v1 squared plus v2 squared. And so those are the first and second component. So, uh-huh. Because we're trying to verify this answer we just got has a length of 1. So negative 3 over square root of 13, quantity squared, plus 2 over square root of 13, quantity squared. Now, do some math with me. Negative 3 over square root of 13, quantity squared. 9 over 13, and negative times a negative is going to be a positive. 3 squared is 9. When you square the square root of 13, you get 13. So that's 9 thirteenths plus 2 over the square root of 13, quantity squared. 4 over 13. Hey, guess what, guys? This is looking good. Yeah. 
Nine thirteenths plus four thirteenths. 13 over 13. What do we know about 13 over 13? It's 1. What do we know about the square root of 1? It's 1. What were we supposed to be doing? Finding 1 makes verifying the length. Verifying that has a length of 1. Does it have a length of 1? It does. But my hands were not fast enough that pretty quickly, but it really just depends if the computer wants to be agreeable. Okay, guys. So um, that's probably our best stopping point. I hope to get a little farther and start talking about the linear combination, but we're going to stop there. And so the homework you see on the board. Ooh, I need to check and make sure I got it in Skyward. I don't. It might not be in Skyward. I might have won. Okay. So, yeah, tests are in the process. Um, what is written on the board in terms of homework is page 464, numbers 5 through 8, 13 through 20, 25 to 34. Now, that goes with all of the notes. And I haven't quite got through all the notes, yes? Now, what I will probably also do, I will probably finish these notes tomorrow. I will likely add a problem or two from the next page, and there's a couple problems that go with those. So I might tweak this homework and add a few more before it's due on then Monday. Like add problems? A couple, right, to go with 6.1.2. But as of right now, this is what goes through those notes. You can get started. We will finish tomorrow. Homework's not due till Monday is what it's sounding like.